Hey, what's going on guys? I have a new knife review for you. Today we're looking at the Boker Solo. It's a really cool uh, Boker Anzo collaboration. See in the back it is an Anzo design. And a very distinctive bear claw, or animal claw, whatever it happens to be. But uh, anyway, really cool knife. I got this with a, a couple of knives from uh, South Blade. South Blade is run by a guy who's in the YouTube community. Really, really cool. Just small business guy who wanted to get into uh, selling knives and uh, has some pretty good prices here and there. Uh, pretty good selection of stuff. Um, and he offered to uh, send a couple knives for me to, to check out and review for you guys. This is one of them. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, my name, Instagram name is Cutlery Lever Jeff. I have uh, a couple pictures of some other knives you're going to see in the future, which uh, only people on Instagram know about. But uh, they all came from, uh, from South Blade. So very generous of him to uh, to send these for me to to try and use. And uh, I've been using this for a long time, and uh, I want to do a review on it now for you guys. So first off, let me show you what it came with. Put this off to the side. Actually, leave it there so you guys can peek at it. Um, this is a uh, Boker that's made in Germany. Keep it a nice little bag. Pretty cool. Nothing really to do with a knife. I mean, I suppose if you wanted to keep it in a collection or something or keep it in the drawer, it does keep it from being scratched. Um, I have no personal use for this, although I do like little drawstring bags for other things. But uh, anyway, that was kind of a classy thing that it came with. Um, has nothing to do with the knife, but I thought the box was kind of cool. I was designed. This top uh, piece here that says Boker uh, is actually kind of flared out a little bit, so it holds this, this box shut. So have to kind of pop it open. All right, it's a really nice presentation. And you do get the uh, little wrench to uh, adjust the knife with the knife, which is pretty cool. So it came in an awesome, awesome presentation. All right, it was in here like this, had the bag and everything. See there's a little tab, you lift that up on the bottom. That's where the paperwork was and the wrench. So if you're into uh, gift giving and you want a really cool knife to give, <laughs> box alone totally worth it but uh most of you guys don't care about the box or the cool little stuff that comes with the knife you just want to know about the knife right i don't blame you i usually throw the boxes away but obviously for the review purpose i wanted to uh hang on to that for a while we'll throw the box away we'll keep the bag so anyway all right the boker solo these sell for about 120 to 150 just depends on uh where you're getting them from um it's an interesting knife my overall feeling on this knife is big, cumbersome, bulky, but for some reason I still really like it. I mean, it's a little, I don't want to say overbuilt, but it is a little bit much. It has a very wide blade. Not everyone's going to be into that. Um, as far as specs on this, that blade is an N690BO. Um, its performance has been very nice. The N690 that I've used in the past from various companies um, has been very uh, comparable to like a German version of 440C. Uh, this one I found to hold a pretty nice edge. It was very easy to touch up. I got this razor sharp again after it dulled out uh, from use. Um, just used this on a, a flat stone. Uh, it was an 800 grit stone, and I have an awesome, awesome edge on this. It literally took about a minute, minute and a half maybe tops to get a, a good working edge on that again. Uh, three and three quarter inches long. Very interesting design. It is um, hollow ground. And what I like about this is it's two-tone. You guys can tell, but we have a stone wash. Uh, on this portion of the blade and the flats are just like a satin. There's also stone wash on that slight swedge, which is interesting because it doesn't meet the tip. A lot of times you have a swedge and it, it, you know, the grind goes all the way to the tip and obviously it'll aid in uh, penetration, but this is a little bit more aesthetic. It ends right here. But uh, very interesting. You still have a very usable point on there. Somewhat of a leaf shaped blade on this. Just really interesting. It's different. I, I like that two tone. I like that your your kind of your cutting edge um, is a stone wash. Obviously, stone wash finish is extremely popular. I think Boker did it right. Um, there's a couple versions out there of stone wash finishes that I don't prefer, but I mean I do. I'm a huge fan of stone wash, uh, but there's some companies I think does it better than others. But um, I like that it's on your working edge there, so you really won't show many scratches, you know, and 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 use and abuse of the knife. Um, Overall, the design is pretty cool. It's uh, appealing to me. It's a very, very dark gray. It's like, 
I, it's so dark you can almost just say it's like a light black. That's the best way I can describe it. It's a light black. You obviously have these drill marks in here, which do, do add a little bit of texture, although it's a very soft texture. It's not super aggressive. Um, it looks almost like some like 1911 grips or something where it's like super, you know, like there's a lot of uh, sharp edges or whatever, but it's nicely done. It's on aluminum uh, handle. The entire handle is aluminum. It is a liner lock, although it's not a full liner. If you look in there, it's basically just an insert so that you have a locking piece. But we have solid aluminum uh, handles on here. Somewhat on the thick side. You see the screw right there is for that, that uh, insert for our lock. The uh, overall length is 8 and 5 eighths inches and the weight is 5.7 ounces. Um, we have a, a free flowing design here. See three standoffs or, or pillars. Uh, no issues at all with like, you know, gunk or, you know, pocket lint, stuff like that. I kind of go back and forth. I think overall I probably prefer um, folding knives of this design so that you don't get a lot of lint and stuff caught in them. A lot of times when you have a partial backspacer or even a fully enclosed knife, you do get a lot of pocket dirt and, and crap. You don't even know where it comes from. I don't know how much I get, you know, how much lint gets in there. Where's it even coming from? I have no idea, but uh, all kinds of gunk and, and crap gets caught in there. And although it doesn't have a, a super negative effect being in the handle, obviously once it gets into your pivot area, then you don't have a smooth knife anymore. It starts uh, feeling a little gritty sometimes if you get little you know grains of uh, dirt or sand in there, um, and it's not smooth anymore. So I do like the, the free-flowing uh, folders. just tends to be a little bit cleaner overall. Um, Huge thumb studs on this. It is ambidextrous, so left side or left hand or right hand opening capability. Although I'm sure a lot of lefties have already adapted to right handed knives for the most part, either way. But it's still nice to see that. Uh, I kind of go back and forth on it. I loved it on the Microtech that I had. Um, these kind of oversized, overbuilt thumb studs. And it is a thumb stud, it's not a uh, um, blade stop or anything, it's clearly just a thumb stud. Aesthetically, it works with this knife. I think it looks good with this knife overall, being kind of chunky. If anything, this is like the, the fat kid of Foley knives. Um, but a good looking fat kid, you know? Not, not the greasy one in the corner no one wants to talk about, the funny one, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, <laughs> I do like the, uh, the handle shape, how it kind of comes to uh, somewhat of a point. It means almost nothing to most of you, but you could, of course, use this uh, defensively in a non-lethal way obviously you have a knife open that's a whole different defense situation but let's say you just want to get someone off of you that's causing you a lot of harm without killing them you know you could use this as an impact weapon in a, um, a couple of selective areas and uh, they'd be hurting pretty bad um, as far as the uh, hardware on here torques throughout very easy to uh, disassemble in fact it did take this one apart uh, just to look on the inside for curiosity because of that plate and I don't know if I'm going to do another video just taking it apart. Probably not. It's pretty pretty simple. I mean, you could literally just see in there and see what, what's going on. But uh, anyway, um, the pocket clip came, you know, when you get it stock, it's going to be a tip down. Swapped it to uh, tip up. I did carry a tip down for about three or four days first. Uh, it wasn't bad at all. I just wanted to see what it would be like and carry um, tip up, and I did prefer it. Uh, it is uh, obviously swappable. You can see it's drilled and tapped, but it is not uh, swappable for left side carry. So it's only right hand tip up or tip down. Um, for like the $120 to $150 mark, is it really worth it? Uh, I think that it's it's capturing a, a you know a different part of the market. There's not a whole lot of knives that look just like this. I mean, Anzo does a he does some really interesting work, and I think a lot of people really like him, and there, he has a large following because of the fact. That is, it is a very distinct look, just like many knife makers have a very distinctive flavor, if you will. And, uh, you know, some of this stuff I love, some of the stuff not for me, you know, and you can't love everything all the time. Uh, this one I like. I like this a lot. Like I said, it's chunky. It, you know, the, the liner lock part of this, having, you know, a thicker knife, a wider knife, having a simple liner lock, I kind of picture this more, you know, frame lock. So at first it kind of seems like it, it was cheapened by that. There's nothing wrong with it. The lockup's perfect on this, by the way. You know, and it's got some pretty heavy use. I wasn't afraid of using this one and no blade play at all in any direction. Locks up great. Um, a lot of you guys out there just hate liner locks. You think they're not strong enough. Well, there's plenty of them out there in the market that are, that are way stronger than you'll ever need for a folding knife. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it. It just seems like I would have liked it more as a, a frame lock. I don't know why sometimes 
having a liner lock on a knife it makes it a little bit cheaper to me overall. Just um, it has nothing to do with the, the functionality of the knife. It's just something mental about it. Like, okay, the frame lock version of a knife is certainly more expensive than the you know liner lock. So not my favorite, but totally functional. Absolutely functional. Um, works great. So nothing really bad to say about it. Just, I guess, preference. Um, nice big lanyard hole. Okay, if you're into your lanyards, 550 zips through that. Um, no problem at all. I don't know what else I can really say about it. The pot clip does uh, does function just fine, by the way. Holds really nice. It's a very simple, clean look. It looks like a skateboard deck or something. Um, it's just super simple. And at first, I thought it would be too tight because, I mean, in lifting this with my finger, it seems pretty tight. I thought I'd have a problem. But uh slips in and out of the pocket beautifully. And why? Because of a very simple fact that this is completely smooth underneath. The aluminum... Super smooth. If you had any kind of texture under here, I think it would be a little bit too tight. It would grab the pocket too much, you know, and, and want to hold on. But uh, taking this knife in and out of the pocket was perfect. No problem whatsoever. And there's enough of an angle on the end where it didn't really want to, you know, snag on the on the material. Especially if you guys out there, you watch, you wear a really thick, thick material like um, denim pants. You know, wearing a knife on a pair of cargos as opposed to a pair of gym shorts as opposed to a pair of denim jeans. That's a big difference. You could take the exact same knife and it, it, it goes in the pocket and comes out beautifully on one and sucks on the other. You know, there's a lot of uh, knives where the pocket clips are super tight and if you're a jeans kind of guy, it's very hard or difficult to get that knife in and out of your pocket all the time. You know, you go to clip it on and you have to kind of use the tip of your finger to lift it while you're putting it in there. That's a pain. Um, this one though, I, I've had probably two or three different types of material um, and uh, denim being one of them and it was no problem whatsoever. So no issues there. So, you know, when I first got this, my first impressions were, like I said, big, bulky, chunky, um, cumbersome, but I fell in love with it. I don't know what it is. It's not extra ergonomic by any means. It's a pretty simple, having a simple design like this is also very versatile. It may not be as comfortable or as ergonomic as like something with a finger choil, but it is versatile. Any size hand can grab this knife and still like it. You can have smaller hands and still get a good grip on this knife. You can have huge hands and there's still enough handle left to really kind of, you know, have somewhere for your hand to grip. So I'm not really sure what else to say about it. Like I said, I like it. Best knife in the world? Certainly not. Uh, for over $100, would I like to see a better steel? Uh, yeah, sure. N690 BO for 120, 150 bucks. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but one thing, and this could be for a whole different video topic, I don't think that you should base a knife a knife's price on the blade steel. I know some people get super like super weird about it, you know, like, oh man, that's 90 bucks and all it has is VG10, or like, oh man, 150 bucks, all it has is uh D2, you know, you, you need this type of steel for that type of price. That's a crock of crap. All right, if you have a knife that you really like, I mean, you like the design, you like that it's comfortable. I don't care if it was $300 and it's got 440C in it. If you use that knife and you, you maintain it and you sharpen it, who cares? You know, obviously there's extremes. You, you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to pay $300 for a knife with like AUS 8 or something. Okay, fine. I get that. But some people are a little bit too anal about steel type and knife price. There shouldn't be a direct relation to those two things all the time. Of course, people are going to compare different qualities of steel, different levels of steel um, for different price brackets, but some of you guys got to calm down with it. I mean, it's not the end of the world if it has a, a cheaper or softer steel. You know, all these different steels have different purposes. Um, and what's good for you may not be good for someone else. So, you know, just something to consider. Food for thought. But anyway, um, so yeah, cheaper steel. So some people will scoff at that and say, no, 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 no. 120 bucks, I want some S30B. You know, I want something crazy. I want something like, you know, really, really nice in there. But... You know what? It worked for me. And uh, the quality is definitely there. It's tight. It works. It's sharp. You know, and it's comfortable enough. I like it. If you like this style of knife, I don't think you'd be disappointed in the quality. And that's the overall point. So, there you go. That is the Boker um, Solo. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you soon. I have tons and tons of knives to review, so stay tuned. I have some other things I'm going to mingle in and out. Uh, between knife reviews, but if you're here for the knife reviews, you're going to certainly get some. So stay tuned. See you guys soon.